The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up on Life Today, Jeff and Trisha Bradford share how they were mentally and emotionally traumatized after choosing to abort their first child. Once you take the life of your child, there's never getting anything in that back. You'll never get it. We know we've been forgiven and the Lord has forgiven us, but there's always pain associated with taking a life. It's, it's not there because of, because of me. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Tammy Trent is with me. Hello. I am very excited for you to meet some people that you may be supporting. Uh, Jeff and Trisha Bradford are with us today, and they're going to tell their personal story. But you need to know that uh, when you support the outreaches of life, you support the work that they do. Jeff is the president of what's called the Human Coalition. It's one of the largest pro-life organizations in the United States, and they're doing wonderful work. And I know you see a lot of international things, uh, critical food and, and water and uh, you know on, on life today, and that is very important, but we do work right here. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a very special program. And you know what I mentioned, the pro-life movement. Um, that, is, that is a big thing to Christians. But sometimes when we stand firm for the truth, we can oftentimes forget that there's a human side to that. And you're gonna hear a human story today that, that I think will really spark some compassion in you in a way that you may not ha have experienced before. And Tammy, before we talk to Jeff and Trisha, what's going on with you? Oh, gosh. <laughs> mm. I just think today's a really important conversation, um, especially for people that might not even know how to to help or minister to somebody that just feels really, really broken about choices they've made or carried for a long time in their life. And, you know, Randy, I have some friends in my life that have gone through this kind of trauma, abortion. Mm -hmm. And I think today is going to be really good for me to lean in and to just learn, to learn how to listen, to learn how to love, to learn how to walk alongside. And hopefully for any of you on the other side, too, that that have those same questions. How can we love? How can we pray? How can we walk alongside people that are really carrying something much more than I have ever carried in my whole life? Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. Jeff and Trisha, welcome to Life Today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Take us back. Take us back to where your story started, even though it's something that you didn't deal with yourselves for, for a long time, just so people can get a sense of where you walked. Yeah, well, we just celebrated our 31st uh, wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Past May, so we'll start with that. It's been 31 years. The story of the book and, and why we wrote the book really began in 2010. We were going through a lot. Um, and so we found ourselves in Christian counseling. And I'll never forget that first day we closed the door to that office and Trisha began to cry like I'd never seen her before. And so as we dug underneath those tears and pain, we realized it was a, from a decision we made now 32 years ago. Uh, during our wedding anniversary, uh, wedding engagement, we got pregnant and uh, went to my father. He was a good man. Uh, you, we would have considered ourselves a Christian family, but as we look back on it, it was a very cultural Christian family that we didn't understand. And so when Trisha and I went to him and Trisha was very close to him, uh, we, got, we got terrible advice, ungodly advice. Um, and within a couple of days, we ended up at Planned Parenthood and took the life of our first daughter. And uh, we didn't talk about it uh, until that day that we closed the door to the counseling office. And it was for the first time for me as a husband, a Christian father and husband that I saw the devastation uh, 
under those tiers of Trisha's and everything became, began to really um, come, become clear. God dropped the scales from my eyes of the issue of abortion. And so that's where we started. And that's really um, what brought us into this movement. It brought us into the, into the life movement. And um, ultimately, um, God called me into that. And um, as I mentioned, um, you know, it was a, a it was a, a tsunami of things that ended up bringing us to that moment. And but it was by God's grace that He allowed us to go through it. Tricia, I, I almost don't even know what question to ask, how to ask it. You know, um, it, it's it's real easy for, especially I think maybe for men, easier than women to to be like, you know, we're pro life, we must stand for life, but. I, how do how do how do how do we love women rightly who have made the decision and 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 not damage them as we stand on truth you know i think one of the things that we've learned is many women suffer in silence mm-hmm. they don't tell anyone that they've had an abortion for i mean decades yeah. they don't um they don't reach out they don't you know, just share that story. It's so painful and they have so just tried to um, bury it. Um, and so we have to figure out a way uh, in talking to the leaders of the church on how to engage, how to connect with women and offer resources that provide healing and forgiveness and wholeness. Um, and ultimately the truth about abortion. What helped yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> um, that day that we walked into that counseling office, um, the Lord, I mean, he orchestrated yeah. that whole thing. And so, you know, the Lord ultimately wants us to be uh, free, and we can't be free until we understand the truth about abortion. Um, but he got us there. And um, when we discussed that, it, you know, the counselor asked me, like the Lord prepared her heart, and she asked me, have you had an abortion? Wow. And I was just like, oh my goodness, yes. And so we began to break that down and what that looked like. And, you know, she offered to do a post-abortive Bible study uh, called Surrendering the Secret, which Mm -hmm. was very painful to go through. But, you know, sometimes when you have to peel back that scab, it hurts, but it's the only way to heal. And and so that was really um, the beginning of just kind of you know, learning the truth about abortion, bringing it into the light. Um, so yeah. One of the things that we've talked about a lot, uh, just being uh, church leaders ourselves and being not only leading from the front, but also being in the pews and serving. Mm-hmm. Um, so many pastors are not willing to talk about this issue for a myriad of reasons. They think it's political or they're gonna get um, hate mail from folks that are in the congregation that are yeah. upset about. It's a very politi- politicized right. and, yeah. and can be a divisive topic. Yeah. But you know, one of the things that we just wanna encourage people, hopefully from this book, is that, that talking about this winsomely and gracefully, that there are people in your pews. We sat for 17 years thinking it was the unforgivable sin Mm -hmm. because no one talked about it, including us, including our pastor. And if so, if there's an encouragement is there are people sitting in your pews, over 38% of women in the church have had abortion and men that have experienced that as well. So it's in our churches, it's just hidden, it's silent. And so we as the church must begin to talk about this and bring healing. Absolutely. I I think you hit so much right there. There's so much shame Mm -hmm. and guilt. Yes. And it's heavy, especially in the church, especially, I think, among believers who feel like I I should have known better how to handle this. And I, I didn't. And I don't want anybody to ever know what I've ever done. And so for years you carry it. And I can only imagine just as it affected your marriage, it's going to affect every area of your life, that's right. it's trauma. And unless you deal with it, it will affect 
every area of your life. Why did you feel like it was so important right now to share this story? Well, um, just like you said, for many years, we were too deeply ashamed to, to even talk about it. We didn't even talk about it with each other. I mm. talked about it with my best friend from high school on a hiking trip. And, and it was a, a really hard conversation to tell someone else that you've taken the life of your daughter. Um, and so uh, when I began to work for Human Coalition, uh, uh, the former president encouraged me to speak, to talk about it with other men. And I was like, I, I didn't want to talk about it with anyone. But as I began to share with a few men, you know, they then came out and said, you know what, I've never told anyone that I helped with an abortion mm -hmm. and the pain that they still kept with that. And so it encouraged me to tell the story and then slowly began to, to share that and began to bring healing and it bring truth and transparency. And so I've spoken about our story across the country at galas and other events. But when the uh, our director of com communications, Jason Law, came to me and said, hey, would you be interested in turning your story into a memoir? I think it would be really powerful. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Really? Wow. <laughs> I did not wow. want to do it. Um, <laughs> but I said, I said, I'll pray about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I went home, I went home that week and I mentioned it to Tricia. And she said, you know what? I was just Googling the Lord put on my heart about writing a book, not this book, but just writing wow. a book. Wow. And, and we, and we had talked about, you know, over the last, you know, decade about how could we help together and do something like this together. And I said, so you, would you be open to helping me write the book? And she said, no, 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 you should write it. <laughs> and I said, no, you can't, I can't do this without you. Yeah. And, and really our family. And so we prayed about it and uh, we decided to dive in. Yeah. I mean, this is not just our story. Yes. Yeah, that's right. This is millions yes. of women and men's stories. Yes. And so, um, and then second, we didn't want to see this repeated in our family. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. And so this was something, one, we knew we were going to have a conversation with our children, mm -hmm. um, but also our testimony, you know, um, and leave that for them and show the faithfulness and goodness of God, the redemptive love that yes. He lavishes on us. Yes, yes, yes. The title of your book, Beauty from Ashes, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the ashes in this case, it, it's abortion. Yeah. And yet the world tells us that nah, it's just a choice. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. But for you, I mean, how many years again between the abortion and that counseling session where you, you 17? I mean, that's a long time to yeah. bury something. I, mm -hmm. What did that do to both of you to try to just bury that, pretend like it was no big deal? Well, for me, um, we had major trust issues um, throughout uh, our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't, I never correlated, you know, the two. Um, and I think, you know, going through the post aborted Bible study, I learned that denial was my defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until we began through our healing process that we began to see all the effects of the abortion throughout the years and the bitter roots uh, that had grown and the trust issue and hear me trying to spend all the years after that earning trust and, and you know, continuing to, to press into saying, how can I make that up? Mm. Uh, it's. You know, it's, it's, it is hard because I, I always tell this to people, there's two, two truths about abortion. Uh, one, once you take the life of your child, there's never getting anything in that back. You'll never get, a, we know we've been forgiven and the Lord has forgiven us, but there's always pain associated with taking a life. It's, it's not there because of, because of me. And so that's a hard burden to bear. Um, and the second truth is that there's no sin greater than the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's many people in your audience today that have experienced abortion. And I, and I want them to hear that, that, that they are forgiven, that the Lord loves them and will use them 
you know, one of my favorite chapters in, in this book, we talk about being fully known and fully loved by God. Yeah. And sometimes that's really hard for us to accept when we've realized I've, I've broken almost every commandment <laughs> there is, right? You, mm-hmm. Here you think you're a good person and you go, oh my gosh, I've broken every commandment and you still can use me? That's amazing. That's amazing grace. And that's the beauty from the yeah. ashes. Yes. So, Trisha, what, what would you say to someone who has that hidden secret? Uh, and and they're, they're, they're looking at it going, okay, they, they're saying that they were able to find some healing, you know, to whatever. They're, you're in a better place than they're at watching right now. Sure. That's, they know that. What do, you, what do you say to that person? Well, seek the Lord first. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and he'll direct your steps. He'll direct you um, to community. Um, I would definitely advise, you know, a Christian counselor uh, to talk to about abortion. Um, if your church offers a post aborted Bible study, you know, um, yeah. do everything you can to, yeah. to get in there and just learn the truth. But know that. The Lord, He sees you, He knows you, and He loves you. He loves you so much. Um, And that it's, that's where He wants you because He wants to set you free. He wants to make you whole again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I know I keep coming back to leadership and pastors, but if we don't talk about this from the pulpit, um, your congregation cares about what you care about as the leader, as the pastor, and this is, got to increase as the moral priority of our churches. Yeah, we cannot know, let it go. I, I'd like to have a long conversation about how we can handle this better as believers in, yes. in the church, individually, one-on-one, uh, because, you know, every every four years it becomes a big issue. Mm-hmm. We're like, we got to vote. Well, yeah. you got to do a lot more than that, I, right. I think. Can you guys come back and do another program where we talk about that? Absolutely. Love that, to. That'd be really good. Cause I, I, I'm excited for our viewers to get to know the Human Coalition and, and what uh, you guys do because it's part of the Outreaches of Life. Tammy, I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already crying. Uh, I'm already I know, crying. I know, I know. <laughs> because okay. it, as no. wonderful as it is to hear their testimony, uh, you know, and, and God offering some healing, um, as believers, you know, outside the situation, we oftentimes say the wrong thing. Oh, yes, yes. What would you say to them Hmm. now? Oh, man. I think my first thing, uh, I would lean in and just say, um, I'm so grateful that you're in this place in your life right now. So grateful that you finally got to a place where you just were able to just let it go and let God walk in and begin to heal the broken places of your life. I'm so grateful for healing in loss. I asked you earlier um, if you had named your daughter because I know and I know you know that she is more alive today than she's ever been. That's right. And you told me her name was Sarah. I can't wait to meet Sarah. And I have a feeling maybe her and Trent are hanging out in heaven at this very moment. (laughs) That brings me great joy when I think of your life, where you've been. I love you and I don't even know you, but I love you. And what an honor it is to watch the healing in your life Mm -hmm. and the stance that you take now for life. Uh, we need to hear these stories. Yeah. Uh, and, and I believe that there's probably at least somebody, maybe a handful of you that need to hear this story today. That forgiveness is possible. Freedom is possible. Yes. The enemy can only lie so much. He'll take enough truth and he'll turn it as much as he can so that you feel stuck, you feel trapped, and you feel without. But today that can end in Jesus' name. Seek help. Do whatever you need to do to find healing because it is an invitation for you today in this moment. Don't hesitate. Don't wait for it. Let your healing begin yeah. today. Yeah. Call, call that number on the screen. Somebody yes. will pray with you. And Jeff, I, I'm curious. You don't have to say yes. 
are you comfortable praying with anybody who's struggling with what you've struggled with sure. right now? Yeah. Would you just say a, a prayer for you? Yeah. Lord, uh, we're so grateful for your grace that's new every day. And Lord, if you are struggling with um, abortion in your life, Lord, um, I just want you to know that you are healed, that the Lord loves you, that you're fully known. He knows every aspect of your life, and yet he still loves you fully mm -hmm. and wants to use you for his good works and his purposes. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would uh, just use these individuals for your grace and your goodness and your purposes, Lord, uh, through our testimonies, Lord. You can do amazing things. And we just thank That's you, Lord. Good. We thank you for um, our lives. We thank you for the trials. We thank you for our marriage. We thank you for our children. Lord, we learn through trials and yes. we draw closer to you and you draw closer to us. And we are so grateful for that, Lord. Jesus. We love you today. And we just ask for complete healing, yes. for truth and transparency that's brought through your saints. And we love you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do call that number. And listen, if you want uh, Jeff and Trisha's book, Beauty from Ashes, we are sending it out to those who support our mission outreach today. Uh, but more importantly, hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Hear what God's saying mm -hmm. to you. And as you watch this, if God is leading you to participate in this opportunity to bless others, we really hope you will. Watch this and you'll understand. There's malnutrition clinics like this all over this area in Angola where mothers bring their children that are suffering from malnutrition. In these parts of Southern Africa, child mortality under the age of five is the worst anywhere in the world. Many of these mothers bring their children and they watch and wait to see will we be able to save their lives. Mothers like Angelina here with little Joachim. Joachim is a child that is being ravaged by malnutrition, literally the silent killer that is stealing the life out of her. This child represents so many in these areas. Her mother now can only watch, wait, and pray. Pray that we'll be able to save her child's life. My prayer today is that it's not too late for Joachim, that our therapeutic food that we're providing this child in this clinic will be able to save her life. But my other prayer is for the mothers in the villages all over these areas, mothers whose children aren't yet here, who if we don't reach with critically needed resources, with the food that they need, their children will end up in these clinics fighting this battle of life and death. You can help Joachim, Angelina, you can help the mothers in these villages. Today, you can be the answer to that prayer if you'll open your hearts and if you'll help us to bring the resources that are so critically needed, if you'll bring life in the form of food to these mothers in their villages and ensure that their children never end up in these clinics and never end up like it's little Joachim fighting the battle of life and death. I know many of you join us in prayer for those children when you see pictures like that. I have been in one of, uh, one of the malnutrition clinics and prayed for a child, but I've seen that child die that very day. And that tells me, yes, we pray, but we also need to take action. That's what I'm asking you to do today, to take action. Let's do the faith and the works, because it's a beautiful work, but it's a critically needed work right now. And Tammy, ah, you know, I love the joy that we see mm -hmm. in the Mission Feeding Outreach, mm -hmm. because I've, I've seen the pain. Yeah, you know, when you talk about the fact that you've been in a malnutrition clinic and uh, a little one has died, yeah. you know, I've, I've had, I call it a privilege to have been in a malnutrition clinic as well, and praying, weeping. My heart aches every time I go into these countries and I'm with these babies, especially dying. We can't just let it end there. We have to act now. 
I know Isak said they're waiting, but some of them don't even have the time to wait. I want to get in there now before they even have to be in a clinic like that. I want to be able to bring food to these children right now. And we can do that together, Randy, if we come together. It's, it's so, so easy. Yes. Let me tell you how easy. A gift today of $30 will help feed three children for the next several months. A gift of $50 will help feed five children. Maybe you can make a gift of $100 and help feed 10 children for the next three months. Some of you, and I pray you will do it if you can, can give $1,000 maybe even more and feed so many children. But yeah. that's, that's the formula. Pray and act. Yeah. I pray that you will act right now. Right now, across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. Extreme drought and famine putting at risk thousands of lives means we must replenish food supplies immediately to keep feeding 350,000 children and help reach more people in desperate need. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three five or ten children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send the Daily Life Devotional Calendar. This perpetual calendar has 365 days worth of scriptures and inspirational thoughts to remind you of the rest you can find in God's loving arms. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request the Light of Life desk lamp. Find comfort and encouragement from Jesus' words in John 8:12, displayed on this standalone acrylic desk lamp, perfect for home or office decor, as a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, a cup of water. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. You know, it's such an honor and a privilege to, to reach so many people with, with the love of Christ through the Mission Feeding Outreach. It's only possible with your support. So I, I do hope you're making the best gift you can today. And if you want Jeff and Trisha's book, Beauty from Ashes, just request it with any gift. We'd love to send it to you. But most of all, uh, we love that you are a part of, of such a beautiful work abroad and here at home. Yeah. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. Thank you so much yeah. for being here today and for sharing this incredible story of God's yeah. grace. Yeah. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Life Today. And so many of these moms that we see every day have no one in their lives telling them, you can do this. Tomorrow, Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.